Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering section 713 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. This is the second part of the section. Um, the first part, we, we calculated the EMF um, caused by the magnetic field, or if you like to think of it as the force of the pole. And now we're going to calculate EMF in one different way. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to start with the magnetic flux. Okay, and the flux, capital Phi. Um, so capital Phi is a scalar quantity, and it's equal to the integral of the B vector dot the dA vector, okay? So just like we calculate electric flux, it's E vector dot dA. Here we have the magnetic flux is B dot dA. Um, obviously, this is a surface integral, so we take some surface and calculate what it is. So in our case, for, for our system, well, the area is, is a HS, and the magnetic field is B, and they're perfectly perpendicular to each other, so it's just BHS. Okay, so for our case, this is B H S. I'm going to put a box around this this equation so you remember this is important. Um, okay, B H S. Okay, um, as the loop moves, the flux changes. Okay, so as we're moving through, the flux changes. How does it change? Well, this area decreases by the amount that S decreases by. Okay, so we can write um, the change in the flux over time is equal to BH times the change in S over time. Okay, and what's that equal to? Well, that's just, you know, minus BH times the velocity. Okay, so um, notice that this BHV is the same VBH that we've been calculating all along. And so this, for some reason, equals to our magnetic flux, and it just has a curious property that the, 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 um, the change in the magnetic flux, the EMF, is equal to minus the change in the magnetic flux. Okay. Um, you might think that this is um, a lucky happenstance, and you know it just happens to be the same value. Um, it, it wasn't. A, it, it was more than a lucky coincidence. It's actually true for for all cases. Okay. This is called the flux rule. Um, for calculating EMF due to a magnetic field. Okay. We're gonna now. I'm gonna try to approach a very rigorous um, uh, proof that the EMF has to be the change in the flux over time. Um, so, if you take some surface bounded by a loop, it doesn't matter what. Okay, so we have a surface S bounded by a loop, and then we calculate um, the flux of that surface. And then that loop moves; it changes over time. So it, it kind of it might even change its shape. So we basically have you know this is like a this is v vector uh, dt. It's how much it moves at each different point. Okay, and so we're going to get a new loop. So this is at time t, and this is at time t plus dt. Okay, so we have this loop moving through some constant static magnetic field. So we have a static magnetic field that doesn't change. And the loop is moving through, and we are going to calculate um, what the EMF and flux of that thing is. Okay, um, so the change in flux d phi um, is equal to the new flux minus the old flux. Uh, sorry, that's t. Okay, so we we calculate the flux at the the position at some infinitesimal time later and the flux at the position before and that will actually give us the flux of the ribbon this part right here okay and so you can actually calculate that with the integral the surface integral along the ribbon of the b vector dot da vector okay why is this so? Well, the magnetic field is constant. It's static. It doesn't change. Um, that's an important thing. If we had a changing magnetic field, we'd be dealing in a completely different territory. Um, and um, the, the, the bottom line is that the divergence of the magnetic field is zero, right? So it's not like we crossed some source or sink of magnetic field somewhere in there. And so it, it must uh, stand to reason that you know, we have some surface here. The difference between the fluxes of these two surfaces is the flux of the ribbon in between them. So, um, anyway, 
So let's take a arbitrary point A. He, he draws something over here. So we take point A. That moves down to A prime. Okay. Whatever velocity that, that particular bit is moving at. Um, and let's let uh, this quantity V vector, so V vector, is both the sum of the 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 motion the motion um, so v vector is the velocity of the wire uh, u vector equals the velocity of charge along wire that's current and then w vector is equal to v vector plus u vector that's the actual motion of any charged particles in the loop. Um, the um, infinitesimal area unit. Okay, so he draws this. This is called this dA vector. Is going to be equal to um, v vector cross dL vector times dt. Okay, so this is dl vector. Okay, times dt. dt is the, uh, v dt is the height there. Uh, dl is the, the width of that particular segment. Okay, um, and so the flux, the change in flux over time, d phi by dt is equal to uh, the closed surface um, B vector dot V vector cross DL vector. Okay. Uh, the t change in flux. Um, we can rewrite this. I think this warrants more explanation. Where did this equation come from? Well, the um, DA vector is this guy. So we plug that in there. And the DT it just goes on the bottom there. Basically, d5 would be something like this dt, and so you just move the dt to the bottom. Okay, now we don't understand where that comes from. Um, running out of paper, but that's okay. Um, let's substitute in w equals v plus u. Okay, and we'll note that since u is parallel to dl vector, so the cross product of the u is going to be zero. So we can write this as d phi by dt equals um, so what we did is we added the u we added the u in but we know that u cross dl is going to be equal to zero but we're going to take advantage of this in a minute um, scalar triple products can be rewritten so flip to the, the front of your book and you see that a dot b cross c is equal to b dot c cross a is equal to c dot a cross b. So you can move things around as long as you maintain the order. If you flip the order, you have to invert the sign. Okay, they're equal to negatives of each other. So we're going to move things around and then we're going to flip the order. So we're going to put uh, negative w vector cross b dot dl vector. Okay, let's try this, this triple product right there. Um, that's d phi by dt. So what is this w cross b thing? Well, w was the total velocity. It's how the, the charge moves, both along the wire and, and as the wire is moving. Um, that is the magnetic force per unit charge, F magnet. That's the actual magnetic force. Okay, so we can rewrite this as uh, d phi by dt is equal to the f magnetic dot dl vector. Okay, um, and this is just the EMF, right? So we've done it. We've proved conclusively that the change in flux over time is the same thing as the EMF of the loop. So we're done. Oh, we've got a negative sign. Negative, negative EMF. So 
E equals negative the, the, the magnetic flux or the change in magnetic flux over time. Um, this is a nifty shortcut, but it doesn't work for every case. And example four is a good example of where it doesn't work. Um, so you have to go back to using forces and everything to figure out what happens. Example four looks like this. So um, do I have time? No, I don't. Okay, I'll do example, t uh, example four next. Thanks for your time. Bye.